everyone. It's Carolyn for Knitting in Our Jeans. Um, Elizabeth isn't here. You can see I have an empty space. Elizabeth is sick. And in fact, we didn't get together last weekend because, well, it was Mother's Day. And I had a cold. In fact, I got a cold the day after we recorded on May 1st. So on May 2nd, <clears throat> I had a full-blown cold. So And that lasted for a little while. So when Elizabeth Sath said, you know, can we come over? And I went, no, don't come over. I don't want to give you <clears throat> what I've got. What I've got now is allergies and it's all running down my throat. I'm fine. But the night before Mother's Day, so the Mother's Day Eve, I popped a temperature of 100.5, which since I went to the emergency uh, health service, you know, the walk-in clinic, um, they said, yep, 100.4 is the time that we really do want to see you. And I went, good, then I'm here. They said I had some kind of virus. I'm thinking it's a cold. Um, and so it's good that I had stayed home and rested and drunk lots and lots of fluids. So lots and lots of water and lots and lots of um, water flavored with, you know, something. <clears throat> and that seemed to work so that by Monday, the day after Mother's Day, I really started, you know, coming around. We have been, Richard and I, have been looking for boats for a while. And on Tuesday, we drove down to Annapolis to look at another boat. And if everything goes well, it may become our boat. So keep your fingers crossed um, for that. Oh, I didn't say how you find me. I'm CPREDMOR on Ravelry and posting is knitting in our jeans when I post on Instagram. If we get a boat, you know I'll be posting more because I love to post when I'm sitting out looking at the water and knitting and doing whatever. I have to say I have not been knitting a lot. After I finish that shawl for the church, which will be auctioned off this coming Saturday, I have had no knitting mojo whatsoever. And I had that beautiful um, wolf uh, cardigan to be working on and, you know, I don't care. I really don't care. And I had uh, the other sweater, and I just can't work with any enthusiasm whatsoever. Um, it's been warm this past week, and I have to say that I'm having trouble with temperature control, which I'm not semi. I'm semi surprised with. Um, I've been off of HRT since August, and yet I'm still, you know, flaming. Um, oh, sometimes every day. <laughs> sometimes several times every day. So. The healthcare professionals I've spoken to about this say, oh, it can go on for a while, honey. Don't worry about it. And so, fine. I'm not going to worry about it. But it does mean that I can be drenched all over. So, I had some really comfortable bralettes that um, I had bought from Winter Silks. And here's one that's just becoming threadbare. Right? And I loved it. <clears throat> it was light, it was stretchy, uh, it was comfortable, and I wore them on the boat. It offered a little support, it gave me some coverage underneath my shirts, um, so I liked it, but I couldn't buy any more. Um, I did go to Skims and buy one of their bralettes. I wasn't as happy with it, to be honest, so I thought, well, why don't I make one and see if I can make them. So I ordered from Mood Fabrics, um, I ordered some stretchy cotton and I also ordered some colored elastic. I figured well, I'm gonna have fun with this. And I made a pattern for a bralette and you can see my colored, my uh, blue elastic and this thing fits. It's just about perfect. I think I'm going to take in the shoulder seams by about a half an inch. So I'll just snip them and do another seam. But other than that, this is great. So it's a stretchy cotton. Um, and I love it. So this is a win. I have now made a pattern. I have enough fabric to make several more of them in that color. Do I care what color they are? Honestly, if I'm going through underwear... <laughs> at the rate of two or three a day it really doesn't matter but then I, at least I have something I can wear the next day and I can wash these out and I can hang them on the line and they'll be dry so that'll be good the other thing I get and I've had a problem with being 
moist and or having uh, urinary leakage for a while. Um, I was an older mom when I had Elizabeth. I was 37 when she was born. Sometimes that happens, you know? And so I had problems. Um, I couldn't jump rope after that without having some kind of leakage. Or if I was surprised or I jumped or it, anything that's sudden movement and you just, your muscles just kind of clench, well, I have a small problem. So I bought um, underwear. I found underwear. I talked to my doctor. Back up. I talked to my doctor. He says, oh, just wear pants. I'm thinking, well, that's not really ecologically sound, nor is it comfortable. There's got to be a better way. So I found um, some underwear that's actually made, I think, in New Zealand or Australia. One of the two. I'll put a link in the comments below. And they have um, a dress, um, a urinary shield in the bottom. So it's this, and it's thicker, but it breathes. There's not rubber at the bottom, so it's not like, you know, rubber diaper pants. And it's comfortable. So they've been great. They've been great. But with the black lace, I get holes in the lace. Nothing wrong with the shield. The lace goes. And I said, you know what? Uh, I'm not throwing out the panties or the shields because the panties end up with a hole. So what I did is I cut one of the panties off. There is a hole in this place someplace. It's, it's usually in the center of a flower. And I made a pattern and I have made a pair of underpants with the shield. Now I have, I have not put elastic around the legs because I want to go to Joanne's tomorrow and get one more stretchy cotton. Um, but also uh, I'm thinking about swimsuit elastic for the legs. Um, now, what I might do is I might get some, oh, seam binding, and I might make channels for the elastic and then just thread the elastic through. I think what I would do, um, although I did make the elastic here small, excuse me, smaller, I would make it <clears throat> at least one or two inches smaller still. So this elastic is four inches less than my hips where that panty would go around um, and I think I might make it five or six inches less just so it has staying power but I'm very happy with these and I think they'll be comfortable and since um, you know sailing on a boat can be really energetic and I could be well they say women do well this woman sweats I could be sweating up a storm uh, out on the boat if the wind's not blowing so this will give me first of all it allows me to use the panty shields <clears throat> that aren't you know destroyed themselves and and gives me a way to reuse them which I think is for me a brilliant idea <clears throat> the bralettes I could make one of these and then make a uh, kind of a tunic top and maybe even have it attached something like that and I can just throw on the tunic top and then be ready to go so that kind of works for me I'm wearing my one of my walking dresses that we made um, I started out washing all the fabric that I bought it's washed it's dried under the most brutal conditions I can do with our machines downstairs so that's waiting but I thought what I would do is get some of this underwear uh, made up uh, so it's not sitting around in the to-do pile and then I work on some of the tunics. We should find out about the boat in a couple weeks. I might itch my nose. My allergies are running amok. I found that when we were down in Annapolis, there's something that is putting out green pollen. And I just react to it like crazy. Um, they changed my allergy medicine from Allegra D to plain Allegra. So it no longer dries me up. So I constantly have, I know I'm blowing my nose. It's not a cold, it's just allergies. So while I was in Annapolis, I decided to bring my next counted cross stitch with me. And you're probably saying, but darling, you haven't finished your first cross stitch that we've seen and you've been working on for almost two years. And I'd say you're right, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So why this seemed like a good idea to bring was that it needed to be gridded 
and you can see that I have done my verticals and now I am doing my horizontals um, and I'm almost done so that is really terrific this is a Christmas angel and honestly I can't wait to get back started on it this is how I know that I've lost my knitting mojo for a while I would like to finish the two woolen projects that I've got going and what I may do is I may set up a specific day and just knit and that's all I do that day just to be able to move those projects along because I don't want them hanging around forever the the bags I've got two bags of yarn back here that are full of wool that I was hoping to get to this winter and I didn't um, certainly working on that shawl didn't help with getting rid of some of the excess wool uh, because this is the Estonian wool and it is incredibly thin um, I know that Shetland um, wool can be something like 1400 yards to a skein I think this is even finer than that um, so at the moment I'm kind of knitted out but so I've got that one cross stitch to go and I want to show you the progress I've made on this cross stitch first of all I think you remember I said I had popped off my needle minders I bought new magnets <clears throat> excuse me for my needle minders I bought these on Amazon they're bigger they're more powerful and so my needle minders are not popping off um, but I want to thank Elizabeth for getting me this one and then I bought this one which says just one more row um, I thought it was pretty cute the only piece I have left is right here and that is one color of a light green and that will finish it off in terms of the cross stitch I then have some back stitching to do um, as you see I've done some on the boats well there is more to do on some of the buildings and um, I really want to get to doing that and and finish this canvas off <clears throat> and then I'm gonna start my Christmas angel so I think I think that I'm gonna be talking a lot more needlework instead of knitting at least until I can finish one of those woolen projects or maybe both of them because right now I'd like to be working on linen or cotton or the wool cotton that kind of thing and make another uh, serenity or you know some of those nice tunics that I find really nice to wear in the summer especially since I have this you know these flashes that go and I, I feel comfortable in them and I hadn't noticed before this year but certainly sitting with a lap full of wool can be quite warm and I guess I'm noticing the temperature more oh well <clears throat> so Elizabeth has COVID yeah she caught it at work um, oh I as I said I made a pattern so I actually made the pattern as a one piece so that the front and the back and I can just put it on the fabric and not have to worry about putting on the fold um, and yes I can cut it and I can have it so you just cut two and and seam them together but it's my pattern it's my thing <clears throat> and then this is the hip huggers pattern for the shield and the shield goes on there and then these two sides connect and with that I have underpants so you know I think it's an interesting way to at least use some of the materials that I have on hand that I will wear um, and I don't see the point of throwing the whole thing out when the, the lace has rips in it so what I've been doing is I have been putting them you know I find them when I put them on to wear them um, and what I'll do is I'll put them on a, a safety pin and throw them through the washer and the dryer so that they're absolutely clean and then I take the center out and make a pair of panties I think I'm going to try one of my longer hip huggers and make a pattern out of that 
and then I can then I have a choice as to what kind of underpants I want to make. This may be too much information for some of you, and for that I do apologize, but I know I can't be the only woman in the world who wants to make do with kind of the stuff you've got. And I can tell you that I think it was two yards of the cotton that I bought that was maybe $15. I got it on sale. So versus bu keep buying new things. I thought it made sense. And the bralettes, again, I can make all of this stuff out of the same two yards of fabric. And I'm happy with it. Is it a fashion plate? No. But it's not ugly. And I certainly can, these are prototypes, I certainly can work at making my uh, stitching a little bit more precise, exact, to make it a little bit more presentable. Um, you know, um, We'll see how it goes. As I said, I'm going to look into uh, what people say about regular elastic versus swimsuit elastic. Uh, and I plan to be going to Joann's tomorrow uh, to see uh, what they've got. And if they don't have any in stock, then I'll order it, um, depending on what it is I want to buy. Um, I do like the colored elastic. I, I have to say that it makes me very happy. <laughs> to work with it. This child is so easy to please. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Elizabeth does have COVID. She got it from work. Um, the person at work was basically asymptomatic but tested positive um, and has remained mostly asymptomatic. Elizabeth is not good. Um, she had had bronchitis. You know, she had started with a cold, went into bronchitis, so her immune system was stretched to begin with and then to get COVID and it has knocked her off her feet. She's got a tremendous cough. <clears throat> She's got, you know, full head congestion, um, a migraine. Um, so she's pretty uncomfortable. So she has been off from work for a week. Um, she tested positive this past Monday. I'll tell you, although I missed her with my whole heart on Mother's Day, I was so happy that I had told her to stay away so that Richard and I didn't have to be concerned about it because <clears throat> you know that I catch just about anything that walks by the house. Richard is a lot more sturdy. Um, and I'm glad I didn't go see my mom uh, because I still, I'm sure, was having some of the virus that I had had that had taken me to the walk-in clinic. So we didn't see mom. I talked to mom. Um, so she didn't get anything. Elizabeth didn't give anybody anything. Uh, and we're just, you know, talking to her once or twice a day to see how she's doing. She's um, doing a lot of fluids. She's talked to the doctor. She's done these telemed um, conferences so the doctor can see her um, and then sends in the prescription to get it filled and so she's on got a couple prescriptions and um, she'll be okay it's just going to take a little time and for that we're just really glad she had, had her vaccinations so that she's not in the hospital um, to me, it sounds like she almost has pneumonia, and I know how debilitating that is since I've had it a couple times. Anyway, uh, she's doing better as of today. Uh, so this Saturday, these two days of the first day she has, she's been off, off. Uh, because during the week, even though she wasn't going into the office, people would send her emails, people would call her, because <clears throat> she's a project manager on two projects. And just to have the project manager go out with any kind of uh, pre-planning, it makes it difficult. So t yesterday and today are the only days where she really hasn't had to do anything except kind of be on her own. I can tell you that she finished the baby blanket and maybe we'll get to see it before she sends it off or maybe she'll take a picture before she sends it off. That would be nice. I have seen a couple baby cardigans. I know that Rowan put out uh, an email to me talking about one, 
<clears throat> a collection of their baby cardigans. And that made me a little itchy to do something. Um, so I texted my niece and I said, which would you prefer for your youngins? Would you like cardigans or pullovers? And she said, either one would be great. <clears throat> so, you know, I want to finish the projects that I have going, but I just don't want to work on them all the time like I did the shawl. Uh, so I think I'll do one or two days a week knitting and the rest I'll be working on the cross stitch or sewing and doing that kind of thing. Um, for those of you where the inflation is hitting you very hard, Rich and I are lucky. We're, we're very fortunate. We saved our, our pennies the entire time we were working. I mean, there were many times when I looked and I said, why? Why are we saving so much of this money? Couldn't we spend some of it? We didn't. So we have it now to spend. So I don't have to do couponing in the grocery stores. However, I can tell you, my father was a CPA. And they had a house down at the Jersey Shore as well as, you know, a winter home someplace. So he did couponing for as long as I can remember. So, you know, for 40... 50 years, he did the grocery shopping and he was an inveterate coupon collector. Now I understand the coupons are online and so it's much easier to be a coupon collector than it was in the past because several times my father had the misfortune to leave his collection of coupons in the grocery cart as he packed his groceries and drove away and when he went back they would be gone. Um, but he would save a lot of money with the coupons. So for those of you who are starting to look at the price of gas and the price of groceries, I can say that couponing can be a big help because I know it was a big help for my parents. Um, they never seemed to do without. They always wanted all of the kids and all of the grandkids to come visit and they were able to afford to have us all down and feed us while we we're there and feed, feed themselves and go and do things. And I think the couponing helped them a great deal. So while I'm not doing it myself, it may be something that you want to think about. And I'm sure there are lots of YouTubers out there, as well as TikTokers, etc., who are doing the couponing and you can follow um, their examples. Since I'm not doing it, I can't give you all those links. Anyway, that's about it for today. I'm going to go off to the grocery store. Speaking of groceries, I've got a few things that I want to get for dinner tonight, and then I'll be back. And whether I'm doing any more sewing today or whether I'm doing cross stitch, my fingers are itching for the cross stitch, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, hope to see you next week. Bye.